Welcome to the Living in a Share House series, where you learn to become a better housemate. In this series, there are four presentations, and in this presentation, we'll focus on finances. Money is one of the factors that can strongly change people's attitudes. With this in mind, it's really important to ensure that you have the finances sorted in a share house, otherwise it could create a divide within the household. When we talk about finances, we are not just referring to your budget and how to spend your money, but we're also referring to the responsibility of the electricity bill, telephone bill, internet bill, etc. A lot of students get caught up in the bills, especially because many of them come only every three months which means it can be easily forgotten. And if bills are not paid in time, you will soon owe extra money. It would be best to establish the expectations of the finances in the household early on in the tenancy. An ideal time would be the first house meeting. It would also be easier if each person in the household is responsible for a certain aspect of the finances. For example, Joe is responsible for the internet bill, Bob is responsible for the electricity bill and Mary is responsible for the water bill. Now below is a list of a few things to be aware of when it comes to bills. Internet bills. First, you want to find out how much quota the household can use. A lot of the times when you exceed your quota, your internet speed will be capped or you will be charged extra. So without knowing your household limit, you could potentially have a large internet bill at the end of the month. Talk with your housemates to discuss what expectations are of downloads. For example, 20 gigabytes per person or selected usage times could be used to avoid slowing down the internet speed. It is also worthwhile to look at your internet plan to see if upload contributes to the quota because you or someone in the household is uploading videos on YouTube, then you could take up a lot of bandwidth and quota. Electricity bills. This comes every three months, so at first it will be hard to determine how much it will cost as you won't know how much electricity the household uses. But once you get your first bill, it will be easier to budget for the next. It would also be beneficial to discuss some expectations about electricity, such as having a bath fridge in your room, leaving the computer on the whole day, or even leaving the air conditioner on the whole day during summer. All of these little things add up, and if you're not aware of them, you could end up with a very large electricity bill. Water bills. These are similar to electricity bills, as they come every three months as well. However, take a read through your lease, as sometimes you're required to pay the water usage, and other times you don't need to pay at all, unless there is an excess in usage, but that should all be written down in your contract. Share the responsibilities of utilities. This means to ensure your name is not the only name on every single bill. If your name is on every single bill, then if the housemates decide not to pay, you are essentially responsible for the bill. To share the responsibility, you can have your name on the electricity bill, another housemate's name is on the internet bill, other housemate's name on the telephone bill, etc. By doing this, it ensures everyone is responsible for something. Telephone expectations. This is something worth talking about at your first household meeting, as it might be sharing with someone who makes an international call. If you don't set the ground rules for telephone, that housemate might use it to make international calls, which will result in very expensive telephone bills. Talk through strategies with them on how to reduce these costs. Perhaps look at your internet, voice or video calls instead or look at alternative phone plans that offer cheap call rates for international calls. Eating, cooking and groceries. This is definitely something you want to discuss with your housemates because cooking for yourself is less cost efficient than cooking for three to four people. It might be worthwhile exploring options such as person A cooks dinner on Mondays, Person B cooks dinner for Tuesdays, person C cooks dinner on Wednesdays. This will be easier to save time and money that you spend cooking. Also, this is a great way to get to know your housemates. Keep track of where your finances are going. It's easy to buy a coffee every day to start off your day, 
But if that cup of coffee costs $5, then essentially that's $35 every single week that you're spending. Imagine the amount you're paying for rent per week and now minus that $35. That is how much of a difference $35 can make. There are numerous ways to keep track of your finances. You can ask for receipts for everything and keep them. Go through them at the end of the week just to see where the money is going to. If possible, use a debit card with every purchase because your bank will automatically have a record of the purchase and you can review it at the end of the week. Manually record in a book, a mini diary which you can carry around with you to record the transaction every time you spend your money. Use smartphones to log the transactions digitally, which you can then see the data on your phone and computer too. Now to end off the presentation, going back to our slogan, to become a better housemate. If you can have these finances sorted in the household, that will not just make you happy, but everyone else a better housemate. If you have any questions, send us an email, info at accommodation.uq.edu.au. Don't forget about our other videos in this series on expectations, people and housekeeping. That's it for now. Good luck on your journey to becoming a better housemate.